Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the fighting men of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till it's over, over there. Call for Johnny Doughboy, paging the U.S. Marine Corps, sailors, coast guardsmen, and the men of the Merchant Marine. Greetings to all you guys in the AEF and to our fighting brothers in the Allied Nations. It's command performance time in the USA, and right now time's a wasting. So let's get rolling and answer a thousand or so of your letters by saying, your master of ceremonies tonight, Clark Gable. Thank you, Don Wilson. Hello, fellas. You know, in Hollywood, you used to hear a lot about percentages. 50% for this and 50% for that. But Hollywood today is just 100% for you guys over there. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever attended one of those Hollywood premieres, but tonight you've got a ringside seat at a, as big a premiere as I've ever seen. But the stars are not only out tonight, they're all out to answer those swell letters you send in to command performance. First... For Sergeant F.A.H. at APO 857. For Sergeant W.M. and the tank destroyers from Wisconsin. And for A.M. with the Canadian Army overseas, a little number called, He Loved Me Till the All Clear Came. And one of your favorite movie gals, Cass Daly. Take it, Cass. It was getting dark when I heard the sirens moan. I ducked into a shelter, willy-nilly, helter-skelter, to find that I was not alone. There was someone next to me. <laughs> and though neither one of us could see, we sensed each other close at hand. And there, within the gloom of that little blackout room, Lord and I played a one-night stand. He loved me till the all-clear came. He loved me till the all-clear came. He had the strongest yen. In the dark, and then suddenly the all clear came. He loved me till the lights went on. I looked around, and he had gone. Our story seemed to go like the picture show. Suddenly there came the dawn. While I was brave as could be and trying to be merry, there in the cozy dark, I don't know if it's was he or an incendiary? But something found its mark. I didn't even get a scratch. And incidentally, that's the cat. But still they've listed me as a casualty. Isn't that an awful shame? And to think I really loved him. I really, really loved him till the He held me tenderly and drew close to me. Suddenly, the all clear came. Through the rain, he was a civilian inspector telling me what to do. But in the light, he was a conscientious objector. I mean, the pictured woo. Of course, I didn't come to harm. The air raid was a false alarm. And confidentially, lady, so was he. I found out his name was Mame. And the thing he really loved me. He really, really loved me to the all. 
Thank you, Cass Daly. And thanks to Nathaniel Finston and the MGM Orchestra, appearing through the courtesy of Local 47. And now, here's a letter from Sergeant CFC. Dear Command Performance, down here in Aruba, I'm a very popular guy. I got hold of some second-hand radio equipment and it built me a short wave set. And when Command Performance is on, I really got lots of company in my barracks. But another very popular guy with my buddies is a fellow in Hollywood with a mustache bigger than the jungle brush down here. So how it's about giving us Jerry Colonna? Well, okay, Sarge. We have the professor right here with us. And you're going to hear from him very shortly. But, uh, Don, uh, what is this? It says uh, here that our nation's most eminent health authority is now Professor Jerry Colonna. Can that be? Well, why not, Clark? Professor Colonna is a fine specimen of a man, always in perfect health, always in great physical condition, and I'll prove it to you. Hey, Professor! Coming, coming. Iron in my blood. Well, uh, you don't look any too healthy today, Professor. Well, I'm a little upset, Don. You see, I received some bad news today. Uh, my mother and father's only son just went screwy. Your mother and father's only son? Why, Kelowna, that's you. Yeah, the news is worse than I thought. Ah, <laughs> uh, Professor, you've gone hog wild. Sir, you're speaking of the woman I love. Well, getting back to health, Professor, do you take much exercise lately? Uh, certainly, I just bought myself a wonderful horse. We go riding every morning, but I'll have to give it up. It's a little too strenuous for me. What's so strenuous about riding on a horse? Oh, I'm supposed to ride on him? Well, what other forms of exercise do you indulge in these days? Weed lip? Uh, bicycling. I love bicycling. Ever, ever since my father gave me a present of a bicycle built for two 20 years ago. 20 years ago, your father gave you a bicycle built for two? Who sits on the other seat? Man from the finance company. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Professor, for a health expert, you look pretty pale. Have you been staying inside the last three or four weeks? Yes, burlesque show. For three weeks? Why, Colonna, what could there possibly be in a burlesque show that would keep a man there for three whole weeks? Fresh popcorn. Oh. <laughs> Colonna, I'm highly indignant. Glad to meet you, highly indignant. I know your brother, Highly Selassie. <laughs> Colonna, now, you're nothing but a halfwit. Why, you're only two steps from an idiot. Well, I'll back away from you a little. Professor, I can't stomach you. Why not? There's room there for both of us. Oh, he's talking to you, Colonna. You're absolutely senseless. Oh, now, Don, you wouldn't say that if you knew that I was left on a doorstep here in Hollywood. Oh, now, Colonna, why didn't I know? Why, uh, when was that? Last night. Got slapped, too. <laughs> Colonna, you're positively preposterous. Positively preposterous. Thanks, and you must let me give you a shower bath sometime. Colonna, this is all too ridiculous. If you really are a health expert, now how about giving me some health exercises? Okay. Take a deep breath. Now take another deep breath. Now another deep breath. Don't I smell pretty? <laughs> now really, Professor, you must have some legitimate breathing exercises. I have a very simple one. All you do is pick up a trombone and start playing it. But who knows how to play a trombone? Oh, nothing to it. You just pick up a trombone, like this. Then a four-bar introduction by our eminent pianist, Arthur Shett. Raise it to your lips. Like this. Surprised? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Mustache drags. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Thank you, Jerry Colonna. Well, in case the Japs are listening, APO 957 is somewhere on the Pacific side, and we got vital information from there on April 28th. Soldier H.L. divulged the fact that hundreds of his pals want Carmen Miranda to sing, I Want My Mama. At Fort Randolph, they say, please have Carmen sing for a bunch of happy, happy jerks deep in the jungles of Panama. From North Ireland to New Caledonia, the call goes out for Miranda. Well, orders are orders on command performance, so fellows, here it is. I want my mama and lovely Carmen Miranda. Mamãe, eu quero, mamãe, eu quero, mamãe, eu quero, mamãe, dá chupeta, dá chupeta, dá chupeta pro bebê não chorar. Mamãe, 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 eu quero, ai, mamãe, eu quero, mamãe, eu quero, mamãe, dá chupeta, dá chupeta, dá chupeta pro bebê não chorar. Dorme, filhinho, do meu coração, pega a mamadeira e vem entrar no meu coredão, que eu tenho uma irmã que é fenomenal, ela é... E o marido é o bossal Mamãe, 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 eu quero Mamãe, eu quero Mamãe, eu quero Mamãe, dá chupeta Dá chupeta Dá chupeta pro bebê não chorar Mamãe, mamãe, eu quero Mamãe, mamãe, eu quero Mamãe, mamãe, eu quero Mamãe, dá chupeta Dá chupeta Dá chupeta pro bebê não chorar E eu olho as pequenas mas daquele jeito Tenho muita pena não ser criança de peito Eu tenho uma irmã que é fenomenal Ela é da bossa e o marido é um bossal Mamãe, mamãe, mamãe eu quero Mamãe, mamãe eu quero Mamãe, mamãe eu quero mamãe Dá chupetão, dá chupetão Dá chupeta pro bebê não chorar Mamãe, mamãe eu quero Mamãe, eu quero Mamãe, eu quero mamãe Thank you, Carmen Miranda. And now, in response to those hundreds of letters from all over the world, command performance moves into the jam department. By popular acclaim of the AEF, one of America's number one bands playing the tune thousands of you asked for, it's Count Basie and the One O'Clock Jump.
Thank you, Count Basie and the band. Brothers, that was really solid. Now, fellas, the man performance reaches into one certain mailbag that's been gaining weight these past few weeks. It's filled with your letters requesting Hollywood's charming and dynamic first lady of the screen. And it's our very special privilege to bring her to you now. Miss Betty Davis. Tonight, with tongue-in-cheek, Miss Betty Davis inter interprets the conversation and thoughts of a girl while dancing. It's a satirical monologue written by Dorothy Parker entitled The Waltz. The scene? A fashionable ballroom. A young lady is seated alone at a table as a determined young man approaches and asks her to dance. Why, thank you so much. I'd adore to. Why did I say yes? I don't want to dance with him. I don't want to dance with anybody. And even if I did, it wouldn't be him. Oh, no, I'm not tired. I just adore to. Really, I would. I just adore to. I've seen the way he dances. It looks like something you do on the assembly line at Lockheed. <laughs> and now, now, here I am trapped. Trapped like a trap in a trap. Yes, the orchestra's lovely, isn't it? They play such lovely tunes. And the party's lovely, too. Don't you think so? Yes, I think so, too. Why, I don't even know his name. Jukes would be my guess from the look in his eyes. How do you do, Mr. Jukes? And how is that dear little brother of yours with the two heads? <laughs> well, we might as well get it over with. All right, cannonball, let's run out on the field. You won the toss, you can lead. Why, I think it's more of a waltz, really, isn't it? We might just uh, listen to the music a second, shall we? Oh, yes, it is a waltz. Mine? Why, I'm simply thrilled. I'd love to waltz with you. I'd love to waltz with you. I'd love to have my tonsils out. I'd love to wrestle with a crocodile. Well, it's too late now. We're getting underway. Oh, oh, dear, dear, dear. This is worse than I thought it would be. I'm glad I brought it to his attention that this is a waltz they're playing. Heaven knows what might have happened if he'd thought it was something fast. We'd have blown the sides right out of the building. Why does he always want to be somewhere he isn't? Ow! Oh, for God's sake, don't kick, you idiot. This is only second down. Oh, my shin. My poor, poor shin that I've had ever since I was a little girl. Oh, no, 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 goodness, no. It didn't hurt the least little bit. And anyway, it was my fault. Really, it was. Truly. Oh, you're just being sweet to say that. Why, I'm getting positively drawn to Triple Threat here. He's my hero. He has the heart of a lion. Look at the spirit he gets into a dreary, commonplace waltz. How a feat the other dancers seem beside him. He's youth and vigor and courage. He's strength and gaiety and... Ah! Oh, get off my instep, you hulking ape. Oh, what do you think I am anyway? A gangplank? Oh, no, no, of course it didn't hurt. Why, it didn't hurt a bit, honestly. It was all my fault. You see that little step of yours? Well, it's uh, perfectly lovely, but it's just a tiny bit tricky to follow it first. Oh, you worked it up yourself. <laughs> Did you really? Well, aren't you amazing? Well, now I think I've got it. Oh, I think it's lovely. I was watching you do it when you were dancing before. It's awfully effective when you look at it. <laughs> awfully effective when you look at it. I bet it's awfully effective when you look at me. My hair's hanging, my skirt is swaddled about me. I can feel the cold damp on my brow. I must look like something out of the Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> All this sort of thing takes a fearful toll of a woman my age. It was just a tiny bit tricky at first, and now I think I've got it. Two stumble, slip, and a 20-yard dash. <laughs> yes, I've got it all right. I've got several other things, too, including a split shin. Oh, thank heavens they stopped playing. Oh, oh, they're going to play another encore. Oh, goody. Oh, that's lovely. Tired. Oh, I should say I'm not tired. I'd like to go on like this forever. I should say I'm not tired. I'm dead, that's all I am. The only way I can tell when he steps on me now is that I can hear the splintering of bones. 
And all the events of my life are passing before my eyes. It was the time I was in the hurricane in the West Indies. The time I got my head cut open in the taxi smash. The night the drunken lady threw the bronze ashtray at her own true love and got me instead. Ah, what an easy, peaceful time was mine. Until I fell in with Swifty here. I think my mind is beginning to wander. It almost seems to me as if the orchestra was stopping. It couldn't be, of course. It could never, never be. And yet in my ears there is a silence like the sound of angel voices. Oh, they've stopped, the mean things. <laughs> They're not going to play anymore. Oh, darn. Oh, do you think they would? Do you really think so if you gave them $20? <laughs> oh, that would be lovely. And look, do tell them to play the same thing. I'd adore to go on waltzing. Hold your hats, boys. Here we go again. Thank you, Betty Davis. Next time, tell that guy what the boy in the mine planter said. I guess we better set this one out. Well, men, in 25 editions of Command Performance, there have been quite a few callbacks. And a certain little gal from Dixie should know plenty about that. Because no blues singer in America tops her in callbacks to your big show. Fellows, here's Dinah Shore. Clark Gable. Hello to you, Yanks, at APO887 and to RMH in Iceland. Howdy to Howard Field and to the radio gang at APO801. And uh, Corporal MFL, who said I wouldn't answer your April the 10th letter? Hello, Fireman Hurryart. I'm singing for Gladys, too, and you guys at Georgetown, thanks for the June 18th letter. And JHH, my best to you and your sweetheart back in Reading, Pennsylvania. Hello to APO 937, and stay away from those big bears. Hello, Augustine and all the mob. And, Jean, honey, thanks for the note written on the USS Sandpiper, and I'll write you real soon. Love to all of you everywhere, and I'd like to make a little down payment on my debt of gratitude for those wonderful letters. Here's the only way I can pay you. The way you wear your hair The way you sip your tea The memory of all that No, no, they can't take that away from me The way your smile just be The way we dance to three the way you haunt my dreams No, no, they can't take that away from me We may never, never meet again On a bumpy road to love Still I'll always, always keep the man The way you hold your knife The way you sing of key The way you've changed my life No, no, they can't take that away from me No, they can't take that away Well, men, Mrs. Clark Gable speaking from the USA. 
This is a land that not long ago had boundaries. An ocean on one side and an ocean on the other. Douglas firs and deep snow and good fishing to the north. Blue waters and lilacs and hot weather and cotton fields to the south. Yes, America had boundaries then. You lived and worked within those boundaries and thought it all would always be that way. You worked at the shoe store in Peoria. Yet tonight you're over there in Australia. And you fly hell out of your bomber and go through God-made storms of rain and man-made storms of steel and fire. And you fight your way back. Then you write into this radio program and say, would you please ask Dinah Shaw to sing? You can't take that away from me. You used to be the clerk in the local Safeway or Rexel store, the history treat teacher in Grand Rapids, the mechanic at the corner garage. Yet tonight you're blacked out on a freighter or lurking beneath the cold water far below the fog that hangs over the Aleutians. And you write to this radio program and say, recently we received packages from our mothers and to show our appreciation would bring Crosby sing Dear Mom. You were the guy who had never been 30 miles away from Carson City, Nevada. Yet tonight you're hoping it'll cool off in India and the Gold Coast of Africa. You used to walk into town to the Saturday night dance. Yet tonight you're in Labrador and Egypt, England, Trinidad, and China. But that's the way it is these days. The boundaries of America have been moved out across the earth. Wherever you Americans have gone to fight for every man's right to live within the boundaries of his own self-respect and freedom. But because of guys like you, when we think of the boundaries of America, we still think of Douglas firs, because you guys are like those Douglas firs, and you like the good fishing in the lakes, and Coney Island and the cornfields and smokestacks, and you like the little towns with the red water towers, like Mount Rainier and Yellowstone and Highway 66, because all those things are American. They were part of you when you left, they will still be part of you when you come back. The stuff that makes Americans. And, brother, they don't make better stuff anywhere in the world. Command Performance USA, the American entertainment industry, salute to you fighting men of Uncle Sam's armed forces and your friends throughout the world. Send your request to command performance in care of this station. This is Don Wilson wishing you the best of the best from the USA. Thank you.